What's up guys, Justin here with the RenderingEssentials.com back with another Lumion tutorial for you. So in this video, I wanted to talk about the terrain editing options within Lumion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so one of the great things about Lumion is how easy it is to create different sites and landscapes. It has a number of different brushes and tools designed to help you edit your terrain however it needs to be. I figured I'd start off and I'd make a video just about editing terrain and the different tools that are created in there. And then we'll move on to some other things as well. So to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to open up Lumion, and I'm going to use one of the template files. In this case, I think I'm going to use the mountain range file. In this case, I think I'm going to use the mountain range file. So let's go ahead and click on that. And what that's going to do is that's going to bring you in into a, like a basic scene that's already got some mountains around the perimeter of it. And one thing you might notice about this is it has the grass turned on. If you look in the upper right hand corner, that means that it's rendering a lot of different points. Uh, it shows like 12 million points or something like that. What I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into the grass under landscape grass and I'm going to turn that off and you'll notice when you do that then there's a whole lot less points this has to render so you notice I'm rendering at something ridiculous like 154 frames per second or something like that so the frames per second is a great indicator of how much uh, work is being placed on your PC and your graphics card um, but for this tutorial in particular I want to focus on the tools contained in the height section so you can get to these by going to landscape and then going down and clicking on height and so there's a number of different tools contained in here for editing the height and uh, different things about your terrain. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to point out just a couple things about the way this is going to work. So the first thing you'll notice is if you click on one of these, like if you click on raise, for example, you'll notice that when you move your mouse out here, you'll get a circle around your cursor. And so the circle around your cursor is indicating the area that this is going to affect things. You can see how if I single click, then that's going to basically edit the terrain inside that circle and not really much outside of that. So we're going to undo that. And before we go too much further with the tools, I want to point out these two options over here. So the first is the brush size. And you'll notice if I come in here and I click on the brush size, the size of the circle changes based on how big this brush size is. So obviously a brush size of five is very large and that's going to affect a whole lot of your terrain where a brush size of something smaller like one is going to affect a much smaller amount of terrain. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you can also adjust the speed in which this changes your terrain. So you can see how if I click and drag this, let's say for example that I was to drag this over to like the one and I was just a single click or click and, click and hold for a second, I guess. You'll notice that this terrain moves very slowly. It doesn't change very quickly. On the other hand, if I was to click over here, on the brush speed of 4.9 and I was to single click, you can see how that creates this tall terrain really quickly. And so depending on what you're trying to do, you can adjust these different settings um, to adjust how quickly or slowly things are going to be created using Lumion. And the other thing I want to note about that is you'll notice when you put your mouse over this, there's a little button here for shift. What that means is you can see how when I click and drag this, this basically moves in like 0.1 increments. Well, if I hold the shift key, you can see how the increment gets a lot smaller. So this allows you a lot more fine control over how fast or what's set within each one of these sliders. So if you want to adjust very fine details in here, hold the shift key when you click and drag. If you just want to do more of a general rough size selection, you can just click and drag like this. So now let's talk about a few of the tools that are contained within the terrain editing features of Lumion. So the first one I want to talk about is the raise tool. And I'm going to kind of drag my brush speed down a little bit. We don't need this to be doing a whole bunch of stuff really quickly. Basically the raise terrain tool, all that does is if you single click or you click and hold, that's going to raise the terrain up that's going to raise the terrain up. And so that's useful for adding hills and berms and other things within Lumion. And you can either single click or you can click and hold and you can see how as you click and hold this becomes more pronounced. And I may as well talk about this now. You'll notice that once surfaces in Lumion get beyond a certain, um, certain angle, they automatically add a rock material in here. And the rock material um, basically comes in, it's 
fairly realistic in that um, after you get past a certain height, things don't grow on faces. So Lumion actually takes that into account and that adds a rock face at things beyond the angle at which things won't grow. So, and that's going to happen the same with our next tool, which is the lower tool. So we talked about the raise tool. Now let's talk about the lower tool. What the lower tool does is that actually allows you to push geometry down instead of up. So you can see how this is moving down and kind of flattening out. So you can use this to lower terrain. And one thing I want to note about that is you can lower things beyond the initial plane that things are in here at. So like, for example, if I was to come over here and I was to click, you can see how I can actually create a depression in the ground by clicking and holding. So you can use this to move things down about as much as you want. And you can go as crazy with that as you want to. Like let's say for example, I was to just click and hold right here, you could create like a big canyon or something like that if you really wanted to. And obviously maybe not the best way to do this is to use the super fast brush speed, but you can see how you can use that to create that really quickly. And so one kind of fun trick about this, and we'll talk more about water in the future, but one fun trick is you can actually add water. So um, by doing that, by just clicking on this water button and then clicking place object, you can actually click in here and you can place water within your model. Well, you don't necessarily want you don't necessarily want water just sitting up here in space. Well, what you can do is you can actually move this down to slightly below grade and then If you were to come in here and lower the terrain, you can see how basically you'd get that water intersecting wherever that water with the water plane that you created. And so what you could do is you could actually come in here and you can see how as as this geometry kind of intersects with your water, it creates this kind of natural looking lake feature. If you wanted this to be a little bit darker, whoops, you could increase the depth in the middle. And you can see how as you increase the depth, your water gets a little bit darker because you get that, uh, that rock material. And you could also come in here and you could adjust the water size using these little stretch buttons. So you can see how I can kind of click and drag this in order to make sure this intersects. And I could also move them up and down so I don't get artifacts like that one in the background. So if you wanted to create something like a lake, it's really easy to do in Lumion. And we'll talk more about this a little bit later. You'd probably want to like paint some different materials around here and do some other stuff as well. But that's just kind of a fun feature that you can use within Lumion. Um, so the next feature is flatten. So what flatten will do is flatten actually, it almost averages the terrain between two points. So like for example, if I have these two points right here and I want to create kind of a flat surface across them, I could use the flatten function in order to do that. So I could either like up my brush size. When I up my brush size, you can see how it's kind of like averaging everything up and down. That's not necessarily what I want. I could also make my brush size smaller and you can see how I'm able to use this to create kind of a flat plane in here. And it takes a little bit of practice to get exactly the result you want, but this is great for, like let's say you wanted to bring a building in and you had like a building pad or something like that. You could use the flatten tool in order to flatten this out to create kind of a pad space. So the next tool, Jitter, actually does the exact opposite of flatten. So flatten comes in and it kind of averages points so that they're flat inside Lumion, but Jitter is going to do the opposite. It's basically going to come in here and it's going to add random imperfections, so random ups and downs into your terrain. So you can see how as I do this, as I click out here, um, this is giving me a much more like realistic kind of rolling hills look out here because one thing that looks really unnatural in a rendering is if everything's ultra flat because there's no such thing as like an actual flat field or anything like that. There's always imperfections. Well, if you just come out here and you just do like a single click, you can see how you can add these imperfections that make this look a lot more natural without having to do a whole lot of other adjustment. And so the other thing about that is you can also use that if you click and hold it, it's just going to keep growing your random imperfections. So if I was to make this brush really big, for example, and we'll go ahead and kind of move this off into the distance and we'll kind of up our brush speed a little bit, you could actually create new mountain ranges just by clicking and holding. And so that's a really cool and interesting feature um, that allows you to make a lot of changes really quickly. So, and you may not want to go quite so strong 
with it so you might want to turn your brush speed down a little bit but you can see how that definitely allows you to add those uh those random imperfections to the ground and then the last tool kind of does the opposite of jitter so jitter randomly moves things up and down to create these imperfections however if you wanted to come in and like round these off you can see how i can actually use the smooth function in order to do that so you can see how as i click in here as i single click this is actually smoothing the ups and downs out so let's say for example that i wanted to take this area right here and kind of smooth that out it kind of works a lot the same way that the flatten function does um, in that you see I was able to remove that really quickly as I click smooth it actually like kind of averages the ups and downs out in order to create more of a smooth site so those are your five tools for moving your terrain up and down. There's also a couple tools over here on the right hand side that get really interesting. So the first one is flatten terrain map. So that one's great if you wanted to start over. So if you click on flatten terrain map, you can see how it takes everything and just flattens it. So if you're just at a point where you don't like what you have, you can just uh, use the flatten terrain function in order to start over. And then the second one that's over here is really interesting to me. It's called load terrain map. What that allows you to do is that actually allows you to bring in a black and white height map and use that in order to generate a terrain. So this is a height map that I downloaded off, uh, I think it was a USGS website. And really the trick with these is finding the right height maps, but this is just kind of some of the mountains in Colorado. And if I was to bring this in, and let's fly way out here. You can see how this actually uses that height map in order to generate the terrain out here. So depending on your source, you can generate large areas using the load terrain function and we'll talk a little bit more about where to find these in a future video and then finally if you have an area where you're working a lot you can actually save your terrain map in a location where you can open it later so that should give you a good introduction to the way the terrain editing in Lumion works. Um, in the next video, I'm not sure, we're probably going to talk about either water or adding materials, maybe a little bit of both. So make sure you uh, click that subscribe button for future Lumion tutorials. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.